We've already introduced the um, three elements of the electrical systems, the resistor, capacitor, and inductor. And we gave the element laws, which uh, here we've written in the S form, where S stands for a time derivative. Uh, the next thing that we want to do is we want to look at these uh, all as being very generic elements where there's a value z such that the element law for any of these systems is going to be 1 over z times v1 minus v2. And in that case, uh, it's clear what z is. For the resistor, z is equal to r. For the inductor, z is equal to ls. And then for the capacitor, we actually need 1 over cs. So if you put those together, then the impedance for each of the elements, we can all treat in exactly the same way using i equals 1 over z times v1 minus v2. So there's some simple things we can immediately do with the concept of impedance, which is, first of all, if we have two items in a series, their impedances add together. And if they're in parallel, we sum them in inverse. This is actually opposite to how we work with stiffness or damping in mechanical systems. Uh, so this is one uh, case where uh, we actually have to remember that things are a little bit different. But the idea is that the equivalent stiffness uh, or equivalent impedance for these two elements together is just going to be Z1 plus Z2. And that's not so hard to, uh, to actually derive because, first of all, we know that I is equal to 1 over Z1 times V1 minus V2. And I is also equal to 1 over Z2 times V2 minus V3. So if we write the voltage drops, that's V1 minus V2 and V2 minus V3, we can just add up these two equations and we get V1 minus V3, the voltage drop across the entire system, is just equal to 1 over Z1 plus Z2 times I. So that's how we derive the um, series impedances. Similarly, uh, if we have two items in parallel, Z1 and Z2, then the equivalent um, uh, impedance is found by taking the sum of the inverses, like so. Again, uh, we can uh, easily derive this. The uh, voltage drop, let's call this current uh, the sum of two separate currents, I1 and I2, where I1 is going to be equal to V1 minus V2 over Z1, and then I2 is just going to be V1 minus V2 over Z2. So in other words, I is equal to 1 over Z1 plus 1 over Z2 times V1 minus V2, where this quantity has to be the same as 1 over the equivalent impedance. So we've derived the series and parallel laws for impedances. Let's do a quick example of uh, equivalent impedances. Uh, in this first system, let's find an e equivalent impedance, maybe we'll call it ZEQ, for the resistor and the capacitor. And we know that 1 over ZEQ is equal to 1 over Z1 plus 1 over Z2 where Z1 is the impedance of the capacitor, which is 1 over Cs, and Z2 is the impedance of the resistor, 1 over R. So what we end up with is 1 over ZEQ is equal to 1 over 1 over Cs plus 1 over R. In other words, Cs plus 1 over R. So that gives us the equivalent impedance for this system. Uh, similarly, we have the resistor and the inductor below, where uh, in series, the equivalent impedance, maybe we'll call this one ZEQ prime, is going to be uh, the sum of the two separate impedances, Z1 and Z2, where for Z1, we have the resistor, that's just going to be R, and for the inductor, it's going to be LS. So here we have... Uh, equivalent impedances for a resistor and a capacitor in parallel and for a resistor and inductor in series.